Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you can tell by the title and thumbnail, in this video we're going to be building a little built-in seating area reading nook with some storage in this space in between these two closets here. There should be a lot of techniques that can help you in some of your projects, so let's just get right into it. Starting with moving this electrical, obviously it's going to be covered up down here, so I'm going to move it up on the wall to a spot where I think it'll be comfortable to plug in like a, a tablet or laptop while you're sitting here. When removing the drywall, I just took my time to take it off as cleanly as possible so I could reuse it after running the new wire. It was a little tricky drilling through all these studs with the space I had to get my drill in, but I just drilled as far as I could with just a spade bit, and then I stuck the bit back into the hole and then added an extension to finish drilling all the way through. If you're not familiar, this new box I'm adding is called an old work box. You don't have to nail it to a stud, there's just little tabs on the back that basically clamp against the drywall as you tighten the screws on the front. After verifying everything works as it should, I could go ahead and get it closed back up. Here I'm beveling the edge of the drywall to create a space to fill with mud. I did this on the two small pieces as well. To give me somewhere to fasten the pieces back in, I inserted some scrap wood back behind the drywall. Obviously this doesn't need to look too pretty since it'd be hidden anyways at the end. I actually probably spent more time than I should have on it to make it look good, but hey, maybe if someone removes this in the future I save them a bit of work. Off camera I finished the mud work and primed it to seal it up. And then after the cabinet was in place I realized I feathered it out a bit too high so I did have to paint a bit with the blue to prevent from seeing it when the cushion was compressed. Now let's get to building this thing. When it comes to built-ins that are completely trapped on three sides, the trick is to not even try to build it to fit perfect all around. This first corner wasn't too bad, just a typical drywall build up right in the corner but the second one was out by over three quarters of an inch. Then not only do you have to worry about it being square, you have to consider all three walls being plumb to each other as well. In this case, that back wall was out of plumb quite a bit, but again, we don't need to worry about that. I'm only going to focus on making the front face frame fit perfect since that's what you'll see. I figured I'd get to show you some scribing techniques on the face frame, but since it's so short, we actually avoided any bumps or bows in the side walls. And in such a short span, the two walls were within a 16th inch of being plumb to each other. I'm using poplar for the face frame and after cutting the pieces to length, I ripped them to one and a half inches wide. I made the bottom rail taller so after I wrapped the baseboard around the front, I'd be left with the same one and a half inch reveal as the rest of the face frame. I drilled and used pocket hole screws on the back to attach all the pieces. It was at this point I realized when I flipped my pieces over to screw the back, I didn't mirror image the entire face frame, so the drawer openings were on the opposite side of what I wanted. I get a lot of comments about how easy I make things look, but everyone makes mistakes sometimes. If someone says they don't and the videos are always flawless, they're full of it. I could have left it how it was and the drawers would just be on the other side, but I actually sized the drawers to where they could be removed and an access hole would be hidden behind them to get to that electrical junction box in the wall. Luckily it's paint grade and after flipping it around those other screw holes could be filled and no one's the wiser. Well except of course all you watching which is hopefully millions of people after you share and like the video so YouTube knows to recommend it to others. After verifying the face frame fit which it was right on the money I could then get started building the cabinet carcass to fit it. 
which again is backwards of typical cabinet making, but on a built-in like this, it's way easier since we only need that front to be perfect. It also allows me to build the cabinet to where the one side and middle divider line up perfect with the drawer openings, so no filler strips are needed like you typically would with a face frame cabinet. With all my pieces cut to size, I could quickly get it together using glue and 18 gauge narrow crown staples to hold until the glue dries. The Home Depot sent out the newest Milwaukee 18 gauge stapler this quarter, part of their prospective program for me to check out and share with you guys. If you're a subscriber of mine, seeing me use the Milwaukee nailers is nothing new, and this stapler is just as impressive and fits right in. Honestly, it's a very similar design as the Brad nailer, except of course it shoots staples. But if you're not familiar, it features an on-off button right here on the base, and it does stay on for quite a while, so it's not super annoying and having to turn it on every time you pick it up. The mode button will cycle between single or bump fire. It has a tool-free drive depth adjustment, so you can fine-tune it depending on your material and how far you're wanting to set the staple. I really like the small precision tip, and it comes with a spare as well that's stored on the gun. The LED light wasn't doing much for me working outside, but I can tell you from experience on the other nailers, it's a really awesome feature to have. The belt hook is a durable but sleek design that's easy to slide in and out of your pocket or tool belt, and you can reverse it to the other side if you prefer. It shoots the quarter inch narrow crown staples in lengths of 3 8 of an inch to 1 and a half inches long. I did have my depth set, but I messed that up filming that other clip adjusting it, but I can adjust the gun easy peasy and then I'm off and running. I love staples for stuff like this, it's just really fast and they have quite a bit more holding power than nails, and once that glue dries this thing will be solid and stuck together forever. And the way I built this, all the weight is transferred directly down to the ground on all the pieces anyways. At 5.4 pounds, of course the gun is a little heavier than a pneumatic, but you don't have that annoying air hose dragging behind you and adding resistance as well. Not to mention hauling around and listening to the loud air compressor. It has a nice compact and ergonomic design that's just balanced well and easy to use at any angle you need. Unfortunately, I couldn't just add the face frame now and get it all primed and painted together, and I'll show you why in a bit. But to make things easier on myself, I did go ahead and add my two coats of primer to the separate pieces outside working at a gentleman's height. With the primer dry, I could get it moved upstairs to the room. The main cabinet is just sitting in the opening with plenty of room to move in any direction to line up where I need it on the face frame. Here you can see why I couldn't just attach the front face frame and slide it all in together. The very outside corners are a good quarter inch to 3 eighths of an inch narrower than where the cabinet would be sitting, and it's too deep to try and angle the whole unit in together. I guess it's a good thing I did, and less than to take your measurements from where you actually want the cabinet. I'd be in quite a pickle if I based everything off the dimensions of those outside corners. Next I could just slide the main carcass where it needed to be, which like I said is where that center divider and left panel are flush with the drawer openings, and get it tacked on with glue and a few brad nails. This thing was stuck in there pretty good, but I did go ahead and fasten it to a couple studs. And for the most boring clip ever, white Sherwin-Williams emerald paint on white primer. So let's go ahead and move on. Now that the box was set in its final spot, I could measure and get the top pieces cut. But I wouldn't actually install this until the end of the project. Since this is for a kid's room, I came up with a pretty fun design for the drawer fronts. To cut the grooves, I'm using the score cut depth feature on the Makita saw. The track saw made quick and accurate work for 95% of this, except for this one spot where the cuts aren't all the way across the board, and since it's a circular blade, there's still some material that needs removed. To clean this up, I used a Freud 8th inch spiral bit in the router. Sorry for not the best camera angle, this is one of those times where I just needed to get up close and personal myself, and focus on not messing up. 
And if I can, I always like to go ahead and get my drawer pull holes drilled before paint to prevent marring up the finish at all. And between coats of primer and paint on those, I began working on the drawer boxes. I already cut my pieces of size when breaking down the sheet at the beginning, so here I'm just cutting the groove for the plywood bottom panel. To join the pieces, I drilled pocket holes on the front of the front piece and on the back of the back piece. And then I could get those plywood edges covered up with some iron-on edge banding. With the boxes made up, next I added the drawer slides. I simply measured where the slide needed to be so that once the drawer was installed, it would sit a quarter inch above the face frame rails. Then I marked a line on the box. Next all you have to do is line up the holes on the drawer slide in the center of that line. Then to attach the mating piece inside the cabinet, I cut some scrap blocks to set the slide on so each side would be the same. Oh, I should mention, in this case, the floor and cabinet are both level. If not, doing it like this, your drawer would come out at an angle, so that's something to verify first. Next, I could cut and install the new baseboards to wrap around the front. One of the last things to make was the top cushion, and if you guessed I could sew, well you guessed wrong. But I did get the new Milwaukee stapler, so we're going with the no sew method using a plywood backer. First I used some spray adhesive to attach the plywood to the 3 inch high density foam. Once that was stuck on there, I just used a serrated bread knife, and that cut through the foam really easy. Since the plywood edge is pretty sharp and I'd be wrapping the fabric underneath, I figured it would be a good idea to go ahead and round that edge over with the router. Next I covered the foam with some extra high loft batting. This helps ease the edges and not make it look so square. Also the foam is kind of grippy for lack of a better term and the batting helps allow the fabric to move when you sit on it. For this I just used the spray adhesive on the edges. Lastly I laid out the fabric and made sure there were no wrinkles in it and sat the cushion on top. Then evenly pull and wrap the fabric over and pepper that thing with staples. You just want to staple in a random fashion so they're not all pulling on the same strand in the fabric. This is where the zero ramp up time in the Milwaukee stapler really shines. Literally as fast as you can pull the trigger or move the gun in bump fire mode, it'll shoot. Also, in the probably hundreds of staples here, every single one is perfectly set, which honestly is really impressive. Again, thanks to the Home Depot for sending this out. It's been a great addition to the lineup, and I'll leave a link below if you guys want to check it out. When it came time for the corners on this, not gonna lie, I kinda cheated. Since you won't be able to see it, I just nicely folded the excess around the side and then cut some of the extra material out on the bottom and got it stapled in place. Next up, to finish this thing off, I just needed to install the drawer fronts and hardware. Leaving this top piece off until now really was the only way to make installing the drawers possible and painting a whole lot easier.
After sliding the cushion in, I did attach it from underneath with a couple screws to keep it from sliding back out. All right, that's a wrap for me at least. They still need some pillows here. Obviously this is made for a kid to sit here and read or lounge or whatever. Just to get ahead of the YouTube comments, I'm sure it'll be emphasized not to lean against the window, but even for the parents or anyone just to come in here and sit and play or anything, sit here and put your socks on. I really like this design to fit in between these two closets where it'd be hard to find something to fit this exact space, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. Give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, take care.